along the Ohio River. On Indiana's farthest southern reaches are many legends. There are tales of ancient burial sites where the ground is cursed. Bloodthirsty river pirates whose evil deeds replay in the dark of night. Phantoms on dark horses that chase terrified travelers and then disappear. Riverboat captains that put a curse on ships from beyond the grave. And mansions over 150 years old with residents that some say have never left. But are they just spooky tales to entertain people around campfires? Or is there something more to them? Let's take a journey along the Ohio River, learning about these stories that have captivated people for more than 200 years. The place we now call Indiana has been inhabited for thousands of years. At Evansville, you can view mounds built along the Ohio River by an ancient, unknown people. This site alone has 13 mounds built in antiquity. From 1939 to 1964, archaeologist Glenn Black retrieved over 2.5 million artifacts, including human remains. And some say the spirits of these ancient people weren't happy about it. Inside the interpretive center, where many of these artifacts reside, employees have reported a strange feeling of being watched when they were the only ones there. They've heard large boxes and other items in the displays moved by unseen hands. They've seen the spooky shadows of people moving against the walls, often called shadow people. Paranormal investigations have been conducted. They've recorded voices and other unusual sounds that cannot be explained. Next to the state property, several mounds were once flattened to build houses. People living in these homes over the years have reported unexplained activities, such as items moving on their own and never feeling at peace. And perhaps a lack of peace is the reason for these and other strange occurrences along the river. River Road lies between Candleton and Tell City and stretches about three miles. Some say it's one of the most haunted areas along the river. Starting in 1858, it was the haunt of a phantom horse rider, one that terrified people traveling this lonely stretch of road. Like something from the legend of Sleepy Hollow, this ghostly rider appeared and disappeared into thin air. On one occasion, the phantom galloped beside a horse-drawn buggy. The terrified driver shot the phantom numerous times with a pistol. But the rider was completely unaffected. There was neither wound or blood from the gunshots. And then, the phantom simply disappeared. On another occasion, the phantom interrupted an outdoor wedding reception, with many eyewitnesses detailing a ghostly rider holding a whip. It appeared and vanished without a trace. As US-66 was built just north, River Road is seldom used and is overgrown. But from 1858 to 1900, nearly 50 years, 
many people saw something that they could not explain. Located east of Candleton, just above the Ohio River, on Millstone Road, is hallowed ground. And if you listen to stories from locals, it's haunted ground with a sinister backstory. On March 17, 1960, a Lockheed L-188C Electra left Chicago for Miami. Flight 710 was carrying 57 passengers and six crew members. Approximately 3.15 p.m. at 18,000 feet, the engines and wings separated from the airplane. This sent the fuselage with 63 people to the ground at over 600 miles an hour. The imminent terror of those aboard is unthinkable. The crash left a crater measuring 40 feet across and 25 feet deep. There were no survivors. It was investigated as a terrorist attack as this was during the Cold War with the Soviets. After a thorough investigation, no evidence of tampering or explosives could be found. However, witnesses on the ground said they heard an explosion like a bomb went off shortly before the crash. Adding to the mystery was one passenger, Chayoki Akita. He was a Japanese American commander for the CIA. Chayoki was a spy hunter that interrogated suspected Soviet spies. If anyone was a target of the Soviet government, it would be him. The accident was classified as a mechanical failure, but at 600 miles an hour on impact, any evidence was destroyed. Today, a monument memorializes this horrible tragedy and the 63 passengers that died here. But that is only half the story. People say they've seen things here, from balls of light to figures of people walking these grounds and suddenly disappear. Two local kids told me without reservation, Mister, this place is haunted. A friend of mine, who's been an empath since childhood, said the place made them so dizzy that they threw up and could barely stand. By their own description, it was like everything was spinning. Both the accident and the paranormal things thereafter will likely never be fully explained. Driving west of Mockport, Indiana, on River Road, is a very lonely stretch of country, and in the middle of it, a place called Haunted Hollow. Closely following the Ohio River, it was where river pirates once congregated and waited for unwary travelers. Upstream, before a lock was installed in 1830, the falls of the Ohio were a natural barrier. At Louisville, settlers had to leave the boat they came on, walk around the raging rapids, and then get on another boat. These were usually small flatboats with only a few people on board. Going west on the Ohio River, they were on their own. And the river pirates knew it. Sometime before 1820, a group of settlers floated past the hollow where the pirates were hiding. They made the mistake of making camp on the shore and the pirates attacked. All but one man got away, and he was murdered. The victim was shot, repeatedly stabbed, and decapitated. His head was then thrown into the river. 
It was a senseless and gruesome murder. Thereafter, as settlers began moving to the area, many reported seeing a headless apparition aimlessly walking around Haunted Hollow as if trying to find his head. As you might expect, the area gained a reputation for being haunted and people tried to avoid it if possible. Some say to this day, if you come at night, you'll see that same lost headless spirit looking for the part of him that's missing. You go right ahead. As a bonus, a short distance west is the Gobbler Rock, also with a reputation for being haunted. Its legend is so old that versions range from spirits of dead Indian children to those killed in car accidents after hitting the rock. I guarantee I won't be at either Haunted Hollow or Gobbler Rock after dark. Many think of Indiana as flat farmland, but that's not the case in the southern part of the state. In ancient times, this was an ocean, and after that, all those dead animals turned into rock. This created the tall cliffs and epic views of southern Indiana. High above one of those cliffs at Elizabeth, Indiana is the tomb of Captain Frank McHarry. And if you ask the locals, the place is not only haunted, but cursed. Born in 1805, Francis McHarry had become wealthy as a steamboat captain. He reportedly had a fiery Irish temper and yelled at other captains as their boats passed on the river. It was, after all, a very competitive business. After becoming successful and having some money, he started construction of his own mausoleum high above the Ohio River. As the story goes, he wanted both a round window on the front of the tomb and to be placed in it standing up. That way, he could yell at the other steamboat captains even in the afterlife. Captain Frank got his wish. Over the years, various tales were told about the captain, even saying he'd put a curse on anyone that looked upon his grave. Riverboat captains began tooting their horns as they passed the tomb to acknowledge Frank or ward off the supposed curse. Some people have climbed up the cliff and visited the old tomb. They claim to have seen an ominous mist inside, or felt an unwelcome presence. But the fact is, Frank's body isn't even there. Frank's body was moved to Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. He lays in a mausoleum with his wife, daughter, and son-in-law. While his previous tomb was vandalized, this cemetery has a gate and is locked each night. He has since enjoyed a continued peace at the posh urban mausoleum. His remains are on the lower left, far from the river he loved, but also far from the vandals that destroyed his original tomb. The tomb at Elizabeth, Indiana is on private property. If you trespass, expect to be haunted by an arrest record and time in jail. Once upon a time, New Albany, Indiana, along the Ohio River, was where all the rich people lived still known as Mansion Row. The homes here are quite remarkable. It's a glimpse of how the very rich spent their money on palaces. And pretty much all of them are haunted.
the Culbertson Mansion is one of the most beautiful places along Main Street, and in fact, all of southern Indiana. Built in 1867, it was the home of the wealthiest man in Indiana, William Culbertson. He had made a fortune in the dry goods industry and built the home for his wife at a cost of $120,000. That's two million in today's money. It was an absolute showcase. But over the years, it has gained the reputation of being very haunted. Some speculate that Cornelia Culbertson, William Culbertson's second wife, haunts the mansion. A ghost matching her description has been seen many times in the mansion. One famous story is that the security system went off in the middle of the night the mansion curator was called, met the police at the mansion, and went room to room looking for a burglar. The police found nothing except a helium balloon had somehow made its way from the first floor up and around a staircase, down a hallway, and somehow stuck itself on one of the antique dresses. Obviously wanting to leave, the policeman said that everything looked fine. The curator was very frustrated and said, Well, are you going to get them or leave them in here? As plain as day, a female voice said, Well, I don't know who you're talking about. It's just me and you in here. Staff say that whomever haunts the mansion is incredibly fascinated by electric vacuum cleaners. And whenever a vacuum cleaner is out of the closet, it will often turn on and off by itself. On the top floor, which was once the ballroom, people often hear laughing and talking like a big party is going on. But every time, when someone goes upstairs to check, no one is there. Of an evening, caretakers have seen what looks like a candle floating up the stairs in the darkness on its way to the bedrooms. As you might imagine, upkeep of a mansion is not cheap. To keep things going, nights at the mansion have been raffled allowing people to stay all night and see if they experience anything spooky. Guests have reported hearing footsteps across floors and experiencing unexplained cold spots in a heated room. There are so many haunted stories that the staff records them in a logbook and they keep happening. Capitalizing on its haunted history, each weekend in October, the carriage house is set up as a haunted house. The carriage house itself is reportedly haunted, but if you actually like getting scared, your admission will go to a great cause. Maintaining a beautiful, historic mansion and keeping one ghost occupied with a vacuum cleaner. At Clarksville, Indiana, just a few blocks north of the Ohio River, is the iconic Colgate Clock. With a diameter of 40 feet, it was once the second largest clock in the entire world, almost twice the size of Big Ben in London. It's so big that you can tell the time from Louisville, Kentucky. Built in 1906, it was first located at Colgate headquarters in New Jersey 
before being moved here in 1924. But what most people don't know is that the building below it was once the largest correctional facility in Indiana. Before major reforms in the justice system, this was one of the most dreaded places in Indiana for anyone to wind up. Out of all the haunted stories along the Ohio River, this one is the darkest. Boys as young as 12 years old, sent to jail for something relatively minor, could be put in the same cell as a grown man serving a life sentence for murder. In the mess hall, inmates were fed food that was often rotting or molded. They had broken the law and the food was considered part of the punishment. Inmates were forced to work at a foundry furnace that was blistering hot in all seasons and known to everyone as hell. The entire prison was in fact so inhumane that it was hell on earth. Behind these walls, inmates were routinely beaten and tortured by sadistic prison guards. No one really knows how many died here. After the prison closed in 1923 and was converted into the Colgate factory, people reported strange occurrences. These ranged from hearing footsteps and voices to moved objects in a feeling of dread, especially in the basement. Sometimes dark history refuses to die. And after over 100 years later, this one is very much alive. If you drive along the waterfront of Madison, Indiana, you can't help but admire the huge mansion facing the water. It's the beautiful and inspiring Lanier Mansion, completed in 1844. And if you're like me, you ask yourself two things. How did someone afford something that big and beautiful, and how haunted is it? Let's start with the rich guy, James Lanier, born in 1800. By 1817, he was practicing law at Madison. He took chances, became clerk of the Indiana General Assembly, and later became president of the State Bank of Indiana. He flipped his money into the growing railroad business and made a boatload of even more money. You've heard the phrase that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Well, he was the first guy. With all this money, he hired architect Francis Costigan to create this amazing Greek revival showplace. It is just as incredible as you'd expect a haunted mansion to be. Mr. Lanier's wife tragically died in 1846, having only lived here for two years. Some say she never left, and haunts the mansion to this very day. While many unexplained things have happened over the years, one story stands out. In the days before all tours were guided, two women went all the way to the top floor. They came down the stairs laughing, having enjoyed their visit. The tour guide on the first floor asked them if they had any questions. Both ladies said that the tour guide on the second floor was very friendly and answered all their questions. They also added that her red 1800 style dress 
was very beautiful. The problem was, there was no tour guide on the second floor, and none of the mansion employees wore 1800 style dresses, especially not red. Just like the Culbertson Mansion, the haunted occurrences are almost a normal thing. And each year, it's featured as part of Madison's Ghost Walk to pay upkeep of this grand place. Just be sure to tell Mrs. Lanier that you like her dress. Vivi, Indiana was first settled in 1802 by Swiss immigrants. And as you might expect, a historic town this old just has to have haunted places. From an old jail built in 1854, the 1862 courthouse with a dungeon where runaway slaves once hid. The 1898 Phoenix Hotel, which was the site of several tragic fires. The Hoosier Theater alone is said to have three ghosts. and TV crews have filmed them by accident, casually sitting in one of the chairs and then disappearing. But perhaps no place in Vivi has a more haunted reputation than the Benjamin Schenck Mansion, built in 1874 by local newspaper man and industrialist Benjamin Schenck. It tops the list of Indiana haunted places. Apart from the Hannah House in Indianapolis and the Whispers Estate at Mitchell, few places in Indiana have more paranormal activity. Almost everyone in town has a story to tell. Residents have not only seen people in 1800s attire looking out the second story windows, but also in the yard itself. There one minute and gone the next. I've been to many places, and most of them don't bother me, but the second floor genuinely made me uneasy. It's the only place I've ever been where my equipment malfunctioned. One story has it that there was a house here before. That house burned to the ground, killing a young couple inside. It's unclear if it was an accident or arson. For a fact, when the mansion was refurbished around 2000, carpenters, painters, and people that installed new flooring all had creepy and unusual experiences. But that didn't stop the owners from opening as a bed and breakfast. The first floor didn't seem to have any unusual activity apart from brand new appliances failing without reason and light bulbs were continually unscrewed from sockets. If you wanted a non-eventful stay, the bedroom on the first floor was the one to pick. Previously the music room, no paranormal activity had ever happened there. But upstairs was a totally different story. There was something about that second floor, seen by numerous people a lady dressed in white would often walk down the hallway and disappear. Never interacting with anyone, it was like a movie was being played. This is known as a residual haunting. One bedroom door would open and close by itself as if trying to intimidate the occupants. But the master bedroom had the most unusual and frequent activity. Male guests reported that they were kissed on the cheek in the middle of the night. They sensed that the presence was female, but couldn't see anything. For me, this is where it got weird. My autofocus went crazy as if trying to focus on something that was not there. 
It had never done that before, nor has it since. After years of fighting, defective new appliances, light bulbs unscrewed by unseen hands, ghostly apparitions, and a reputation for being very haunted, the bed and breakfast was put up for sale. In 2020, TV celebrity Kat Von D purchased the Schink Mansion with plans to move her family here from California. It's a pretty big house for her small family, but for a fact, they'll never be lonely. Throughout history, in all cultures, paranormal activity has been recorded, including its mention in the Bible. With thousands of years of study and traditions, from antiquity to the present day, people have tried to figure out what happens to the human soul when a person dies. We should all be well versed about what to expect, but much of it remains a mystery. In 1901, Dr. Duncan McDougall measured the weight of people before and immediately after they passed away. On average, they lost anywhere from three quarters to one ounce immediately after death. Is that because gases and fluids had left the body? Or that the human soul weighs that much and is now somewhere else? As Dr. McDougall had accommodated for both, what else could it be? Neuroscientists tell us that our brain transmits electromagnetic signals. This controls our breathing, heart rate, and other needed systems that we take for granted. Right after we die, that electromagnetic system keeps working, doing all kinds of unusual things. In fact, your brain can operate as much as six minutes after your heart stops. Neuroscientists are trying to understand what happens in this very busy electrical activity, but they have only theories. It's interesting to note that ghost hunters use devices to measure electromagnetic activity. In theory, if electromagnetic energy leaves our bodies when we die, the device will detect it and find a ghost. They also use devices to record sounds at frequencies outside the normal range of human hearing. Temperature readings are taken to identify cold spots associated with ghosts. A variety of other methods are used, but the entirety of parapsychology is dismissed by scientists. However, too many unusual things have happened throughout history, and still do, for hauntings to be mere coincidence, a figment of people's imaginations. Skeptics will say that since they've never experienced anything paranormal, even in places where others have, none of it can be true. For example, many people go to Tunnelton, Indiana, to try and see a ghost at the haunted tunnel. Many people experience things, while others don't. But when I went, I saw the phantom lantern without a doubt. It was suspended and floating about 10 feet off the ground. I know what I saw, and so did the camera. At one of my family reunions, I once shared a picture of my ancestor's cabin built in the 1850s. Three people said they saw an elderly woman, elderly man, and a little boy on the porch. I passed it around to people whom claimed to be empaths. Independently, they gave the exact same description. Me, I can't see anything but a cabin. It's been scientifically proven that women can see colors, 
and hear frequencies that men can't? Could it also be possible that some people can see and hear things in a spiritual frequency that the rest of us can't? Skeptics would also say that if science can't measure it, it can exist. But at one time, science couldn't measure gravity, the planets in our solar system, galaxies, black holes, not even the air we breathe. Could it be that science just hasn't caught up? All along the Ohio River are many other places that are reportedly haunted. Places where people say the dead have never left. And even without a body, they go on as if they're still alive, living in the places they loved. Or sometimes, places that they hated. No concept of time or worry about the future. As far as they're concerned, time has stood still. And only we, the living, are confused about the boundaries. If death is not the end of the road, it begs the question, do you know where you're going when it happens to you?